Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have a Jinhao X159. We have a Tweeko Seishu Dragon in red, a Tweeko Seishu Dragon in green. We have an Anoto Longitude. We have an Omas 360, and this is in the cotton grey. Uh, we have a London Pen Company, Nona 14, in the Bohemian, Bohemian Twilight. We have a Danny Trio, Chinkin Cage Mo Matter. We have a Cross Peerless 125, another Anoto, and this is the British Museum Great Court. And we have a Sailor King of Pen Pro Gear in the Lucky Charm. So I think let's take a look at these pens in a little bit more detail. So this is uh, probably one of the cheaper pens I have in my collection. This is a Jinhao X159. Uh, the, these are very, very nice uh, size pens. Now, you'll actually see if I rotate this, I actually have a label on this one. Because I have now, I think, seven of these Jinhao X159s. And they're all pretty much one of two colours, red or blue. So I don't know what ink I have in each of these. So I put a little uh, label there. So this says, CP Colt Pens, Wistful Watermelon. So, so this is a, a nice colour that I have inked up. Now, these are cheaper pens. Uh, these come in around about uh, £6, Euro or Dollars, uh, depending on where you buy them. Sometimes they're a little bit more, uh, they're a little bit more on uh, Amazon, for instance. But these are large pens. These are Mont Blanc 149 size. They have a very, very uh, wide section there. And a number 8 or 9 size nib. Uh, I typically call this a number 8 size, but it typically is more mimicking a Mont Blanc 149, so probably a, a number nine size nib. Uh, it's a steel nib though, but it's a, a fine nib. Uh, I think you only get these in extra fine, fine, medium, maybe broad. Uh, all of the ones that I pick up are fine. I, I could not pick up anything in any other size. Uh, they are cartridge converters. They're not a piston for this price, but they are really good uh, quality pens. I, I am quite surprised about these. And I have had gin house before. I still have gin house. I have some X four fifties, which I do like. Some X seven fifties that I do like. Uh, but these are, I really, really do like, and I think it's because of the girth of the, the the width of the pen, the larger nib, the number eight or number nine size nib. Uh, I can post the cap as well. Uh, they're cheap pens, so that I can just take them to work. Uh, I've not had any pens stolen from work at any companies I've worked for in the past. Uh, and I don't honestly think I will have. But uh, there is always some temptation, especially when you have nice pens. Uh, and most of the time, you're probably going to lose them if it, rather than actually having them stolen. But with these, I wouldn't worry about actually taking like a dozen of these, potentially if I had them, into the office and just leaving them there, going away on holiday for a week or two weeks and... Uh, and coming back and seeing if they're still there. Um, they're very very good pens. So uh, what I will say, though, like a lot of pens, is is that they do write a little bit differently on each pen. So you might get four fines, and two will be smooth nibs, two will be, or maybe one will be uh, a little bit scratchy, and one will be like pencil-like feedback. So there is a variation on the nibs, and you do... Like with a lot of pens, get that variation. So you do have to really look at smoothing your nibs out. And I know a lot of people don't like going down that rabbit hole, but it's you can't do much damage to your nib if you're careful, uh, if you just do a little bit of smoothing. And honestly, I do. Uh, I, I try to tune most of my nibs, tune them to the way I like them to write. The next pen here is the Tweeko Seishu uh, Dragon in red. 
a beautiful pen that I picked up at the London Pen Show in March this year, in 2023. Uh, I saw these in October 22 at the Pen Show, really liked them, uh, and I decided uh, this time around I was going to try and pick these up if they were still there, and they were, so I was so glad that I was able to, but you can see it's a very beautiful dragon in red and gold, and you've got the eyes there that are abalone shells that sparkle, so they are quite nice. Uh, but it is really a, a beautiful pattern all the way around the pen. Uh, it's it really is is a stunning pattern, and you can actually feel it. It is very very textured there. If I unscrew the cap there, you'll see it's got a uh, number six size Yovo. It's a 14 cat gold nib, uh, medium nib on these. And uh, if I unscrew the body there, you'll see it's got a cartridge converter. And honestly, I do like cartridge converters. Uh, there is a bit of a step down. And, and you can see there, actually, I've now got a lot of ink on my finger there. Um, obviously, I had some ink around the section by the looks of it. Um, there is a bit of a step down there, but uh, I, it doesn't bother me when I'm holding it like this, like so. It's actually uh, quite comfortable. So uh, for me, that's uh, a really, uh, really nice uh, size pen. Now, the next pen, again, is another uh, Tweeko Dragon, and this is in the green. So again, beautiful pen, beautiful color, beautiful uh, painting mural on this pen uh, with abalone shell for the eyes again there that you can probably see if I get it right you can see those sparkle a little bit uh, beautiful pen you've got the fireball here you've got wind uh, again all the way around the body there it is actually a really nice size now is there ink on here no there isn't uh, it just seems to be the red pen um, again, a number six size Yovo nib there that you can see. It's a 14 count gold nib. And if I unscrew uh, the section again, cartridge converter pen. But I really am loving cartridge converters lately. I, I do still hate uh, or loathe the small amount of ink that they hold. It it's not a huge, it's not a small amount of ink. But for me, when I'm writing. Uh, I can easily go through a converter in, in a letter or two. And so I, I do find from, from that perspective that I do prefer more uh, capacity on the ink uh, capacity there for, for those pens. But I can also use something like, uh, let's see, a Penida pen filler that I've just grabbed here off my desk. This has got Earl Grey in it. Uh, I can fill these up. Um, they, they come clear like this and uh, very very useful so so for me uh, I, I can carry those with me uh, if if I were to carry I, I typically now carry six pens with me in a mostly most of the time more lately it's a Galen leather pen case so uh, I can actually carry another six uh, Penida pen fillers essentially uh, and and probably have it almost endless amount of ink um, the pen fillers uh, hold I think 10 milliliters of ink so that's 10 refills uh, on top of the, the current fill that you've got in the pen. And I think you can probably get more 15 milliliters out of those if you're not using a, a power vac uh, filler. And you can just overfill them a little bit. The next pen here is the Anoto Longitude. And this is a really stunning pen. So if I show you here, it says uh, Longitude. Uh, and you've got this lovely C pattern going on on the on the cap there that you can see, but also on the cap finial, or sorry, the cap band there. Uh, you on the cap finial there, you do have this rope, uh, and you have a um, wheel there of a ship, and then you have the anchor as the clip there. Very beautiful pen. Uh, the cap is very heavy, and the body not so heavy. But on the body here, you'll see the limited edition number there, 300. And this is number 22. And you've then got the uh, lat and long there of uh, where basically uh, the, the ship sunk. Um, now, this is, again, um, a, a number, well, this is a number seven size nib, actually. It's an Anoto nib. 
uh, and the number seven size nibs. Uh, this is a medium nib, um, very close to a number six size, I would say. Uh, cartridge converter as well. Um, I did get this in a medium, and I have to say, this is a very wet writing medium. Um, I, I have thought about actually a broad actually within a noto. Um, I can post the cap and it posts quite deeply and securely. It is back weighted, so again, it's not something I would normally do with my pens, but I do like that pen. A lot of people think the clip's a little bit uh, oversized in terms of the anchor. Uh, I think it would have been nicer maybe if it wasn't as wide uh, a clip, but I think it also, I think Anoto wanted to make a statement here on this pen, and that really is a statement. So so for me, I I, I, I like it. Um, it. It doesn't bother me that the clip is, is a lot wider than that, say, of this one. Um, or even like the, the Jinhao, which, to be honest, is, is quite wide, or the Danny Trio here. So uh, it, it doesn't bother me. I, I like it. I think it's a nice feature of the pen. The next pen here, a pen that I've not inked up for some time. Uh, this is an old Omar 360. Omar's long closed their doors. Uh, this is in the cotton grey. Uh, you can see that there. It does say Omar's Italy there uh it is a 360 i'd love one of these in an arco brown uh but the, the, i know the price is going to be too much uh i'd love it in uh some of the translucent cotton uh um resins but i also know that they stain a little bit as well now if i remove the cap here i've actually got a, an oblique medium nib on this one uh you can probably see it there om oblique medium with an Evernight feed. Um, it is a piston filling pen. I can post the cap, but it posts onto the piston knob. So you've got to be a little bit careful there when we're moving it because it will rotate that knob a little bit. Uh, but it is a it's a pen that I like. Um, I never really thought that I would need an oblique medium nib. Um, I couldn't get this in just a regular medium, so I picked this up uh, second hand, and I do like it. Uh, it's it's not a pen that I gravitate towards a lot, and you can probably see that from my currently inked uh, uh, video set. But it's still quite a, a nice pen to write with. The next pen is a pen from Sean at the London Pen Company uh, in Canada, and this is the Nona 14 in the Bohemian Twilight. Really do like this pen. Uh, lots of green and copper uh, looking. It, it's just... It, very, very nice, sort of like, almost like a, a an aged patinaed copper. Beautiful pen. Um, it is faceted. Uh, it the the material is Bohemian Twilight from Jonathan Brooks at the Carolina Pen Company. Um, it's not polished, so that raw color just shines through there. Uh, I uh, have a Bock nib on here and number six size Bock nib. Uh, I think, I have to double check, I think that's a medium I have on there. Uh, and then uh, it has a uh, cartridge converter, which is empty, and I'm just going to re-ink it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ink it up with a different green this time uh, than I've used in the past. So uh, I, I will give that another try, I think, um, in, in sense of a, a, a different green that I would normally go with with this pen. The next pen here is uh, the uh, Danny Trio Chinkin Cage Mo Matter on Takumi. Uh, Takumi is the shape or model. Uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, Chinkin pen. Uh, the color on, on these uh, leaves are beautiful, the way that they change. And then also the inscription here uh, on that Chinkin pen. Uh, and then you've got the flowers down here on the body, and then you have an artist's signature there as well. Lovely pen, uh, one of my most flexible uh, Danny Trio nibs. It's a number six size uh, Danny Trio Fireball nib. It's a fine nib, uh, but it does flex a lot. And you can see they're fully inked up there in the converter. Um, I do find though I can write literally, uh, I think it's uh, one sheet and i've just got a bit more 
ink on me as well. Um, hold on a moment. I, I do find, though, that I um, uh, go through this very, very quickly. It is a very wet writing nib. Um, so I'm just going to wipe that section off a little bit more so I don't get too much more ink on my fingers. The next pen inked up is the Cross. And I always want to call this, for some reason, I don't know why, the Bailey. It's not the Bailey. It's it's a Peerless. And it's a Cross Peerless 125. And you see a little uh, Swarovski uh, gem there in the cap finial. Um, the clip's a little bit strange on this one. Um, but it is very functional. So uh, that's fine. Um, you can, it's got this beautiful sort of Gidache pattern, which is very, I want to say almost smooth to the touch. It's not, but it's not hugely pronounced. And if I unscrew the cap, uh, you can see there uh, it's a, a number six size nib. And, and these cross peerless 125 nibs are actually made by Sailor. Uh, and this one, I think, see. I can find out where that is. That's a medium. But, so, more like a Western Fine. You can post the cap on, on the, the rear, and it will post. It will click to post. But I find it, if you push it on fully, it gets very, very difficult to pull off. And you've got a converter there as well. So, this is actually uh, quite a nice, nice pen there to um, have inked up and write with. Uh, this week as well. The next pen here is uh, an Anoto, and this is the British Museum Great Court, uh, a pen that I really do love. Uh, very heavy pen. It's made of solid silver, uh, sterling silver, 925, with this beautiful uh, enameling pattern going on there. Um, very, very beautiful. It is a heavy pen. So you can see here it says, the British Museum, and you'll also see here there is a silver hallmark. Uh, the cap finial is just blank. And if I unscrew the cap there, you'll see a number seven size and noto nib. And this is a fine nib, uh, does come with a cartridge converter. You can, though, on some of these pens now get a plunger filler. Uh, I have the cartridge converter here. I think the plunger filler holds more ink, uh, and they've designed it to fit a lot more of the the heavier silver pens. So I might I might actually get one of those to try out in the future. Currently, they do uh, from what I've seen unscrew. So they are like an oversized cartridge converter that will screw in, but it's actually a plunger filler. So. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Anoto and see if I can get one of those and maybe try it out and, and see how it works. I have actually reviewed one originally, a Magna Classic, I believe, uh, with the plunger filler. But that was, I think, an integrated plunger. And then the last pen here inked up is a Sailor. Uh, and it's a, a Kinger pen. It's a Pro Gear. It's flat top. And uh, this is the Lucky Charm. And I do like this pen a lot. Sailor King of Pen Nib, uh, number eight size nib there, 21 count gold. Uh, this is a medium nib. Uh, again, cartridge converter. If I unscrew, you can see the cartridge converter there. But this is a, a very nice pen. Uh, I can post the cap if I want to. Uh, it, it, it is a really nice size in my hand. Uh, I have to say, I, I like the shape of the Pro Gear. I never used to, but I do now. Um, what I uh, I do find, though, is that I just can't go to a regular Pro Gear size pen or even a Pro Gear Slim. I just find they uh, are a little bit too small in my hand. I do prefer these size of pens. So uh, I am more uh, really liking the uh, King of Pens uh, size of pens. So there you have it. That's my County Ink pens for this week. I think let's now go and do a writing sample. So the first pen here is a Jinhao X159. I think let's now go and do an ink swatch. So we'll do an ink swatch here. Now this is quite a uh, nice 
pastel colour uh, ink, and I have to say that it's one I've started to like a, uh, quite a lot lately. So this is the Jin Hao X159, and it is a fine, and it is a steel uh, nib. And the ink in here is Colt Pens. Uh, it's a diamond ink, but it's a Colt Pens exclusive called Wistful Watermelon. And that is uh, quite uh, a, a nice colour uh, of ink. Uh, very pastel-like red, uh, but it is a, a red that I like a lot. The next pen here is the Trico Seisho Dragon in red. So we'll do an ink swatch. And just get that going because I've not written with it for a little while. And when I say a little while, I think it's probably a couple of days, probably, uh, maybe four days. So this is the uh, Tweeko um, Seishu Dragon uh, in red. And it is a medium and it's a 14 cap gold nib. And then the ink in here is KWZ Thief's red which i honestly think is a nice red and i think that red complements the color on the pen the next pen here is the Tweeko seishu dragon in green so we'll do another ink swatch and again i just like this green um I'm normally more of a, a light green person, so I'm a little bit. I've surprised myself here. I I also like um, this kind of a slightly darker green, uh, which is an Akaman uh, Bazudan wood green. Um, but but this one I, I am liking quite a lot. So this is the Tweeko uh, Seishu Dragon in green. And again, it's a medium, 14 cat, gold nib. Perhaps I should name these dragons. Um, if you've got any ideas on what I should call either of these dragons, I'm going to have to have two separate names. Let me know. Uh, I think they've got to be like dragon type names like uh, Daenerys or something like that. So uh, let, let me know. Let me... Um, maybe even um, some of the Game of Thrones dragons names, perhaps. Who knows? Um, but do let me know in the comments. Uh, the ink in here is a uh, KWZ and it's grass green, which I am liking a lot. And uh, I, I think for a what I would say is a regular mid green, um, I would say that's actually quite a, a nice green color. The next pen here is the Anoto Longitude. So we'll do an ink swatch here and see here, uh, this is again a nice color ink, it's very wet writing nib this is. So this is the Anoto Longitude uh, and it's a medium and it's an 18 cat gold uh, Bok nib and then the ink in here is a uh, Pelican. Edelstein Topaz but that is a very beautiful blue uh, maybe not the same kind of blue that is uh, in the pen uh, but I I'm not a great fan of dark blues uh, I would prefer more of a cerulean blue or a, 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 like a Topaz maybe um, a compeki, something along those lines. So, uh, I, I think from that perspective, it, it's it's uh, an interesting um, uh, blue to, to go with. The next pen here is the Omas three sixty. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now, this is a slightly different nib. It's not a nib that I've really uh, wanted to try, but it was a, a nib that came on the pen so and it was a medium nib so this is the omas 
360 uh, and it is uh, a um, a bleak medium and uh, it's an 18 cat gold near but I have to say it does actually write quite nice and I didn't think it would write badly but I also didn't I, I thought an oblique medium was gonna maybe a little bit more coarser because uh, I'd never tried one before uh, until this point when I got this pen uh, the ink in here is uh, diamine Earl gray and um, you, you can see probably if, if I try to show you up close you, you may be able to see the way that the tines are slanted slightly there and that is the oblique medium part of uh, that nib. The next pen here is the London Pen Company Nona 14. So we'll do an ink swatch. And I said I was going to try a different green. Uh, I am definitely trying a different green here. Um, and we'll see. We'll see if I like this or not. So this is the uh, London Pen Company. And it's the Nona 14. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, let me just double check this actually, because the, the box steel nibs don't actually have a uh, designation uh, marked on the nibs. So I just want to double check. I think it's a medium, but I'm just going to double check. Nona 14. Oh, it's a broad actually. Uh, I have listed it as a broad on my spreadsheet. Guess it kind of is a little bit more of a broad like nib, uh, and it's a steel bock nib. And uh, the ink in here is diamine. And it is ultimate green. Uh, but that is a, a nice green. I have to say, actually, ultimate green, I don't know. I think it should be called penultimate green, but hey, it's it's called ultimate, so we'll just have to go with that one. Perhaps I should do a penultimate green myself. The next pen here is a Danny Trio Chinkin Cage Momata on Takumi. So we'll do another ink swatch here, and this is just a beautiful nib to write with. Um, I love how bouncy it is. Uh, I also think at some point, though, it might become too bouncy where I spring it. Uh, this is the Danny Trio Chinkin. Uh, and uh, it's the Cage Momata. Uh, and it is a fine nib. So um, it's also an 18 cat gold nib. So I do need to be a little bit careful, but you can see here that how how much line difference you get there and then the ink in here is a uh, pilot Oshizuku and it's uh, in a hoe which unfortunately is now a discontinued ink from pilot I do hope though that they bring that back at some point because it's a beautiful gold ink uh, I've got a couple of bottles of that now and uh, it'll keep me going but it would be nice to to um, have it come back as a mainline ink at some point. The next pen here is inked up is the uh, Cross Peerless One Two Five, and I will try and not write Bailey. Uh, we'll do an ink swatch here. Now this is uh, a uh, medium nib. I just want to double check that it is medium. Pretty sure it is. I don't think it was a fine nib that I got on this one. Yeah, that's a, a medium nib there. But it writes like a Western fine nib. So, uh, because it is a sailor nib, sailor made nib. So it, it is a, an Asian nib. So this is the Cross Peerless 125. Uh, and it's a medium. Uh, and it, it's... An 18 cat gold, not a um, 21 cat gold nib. Uh, it's a number six size nib. Does have a lot of pencil like feedbacks, a little bit of a coarseness, crisp, maybe a crispy feel when you write. Uh, and then the ink in here, I'm going to need to um, check the spelling on that one because 
uh, cross peerless one two five. Uh, it's the uh, Venvistus or Venvustus, um, and it is Venatia. But that is is quite a nice uh, purple or, or mauve color there. I, I'd say it's more of a, a dark purplish uh, color. The next pen inked up is the Inoto British Museum Great Court. So we'll do an ink swatch. And this is a much lighter uh, turquoise uh, color, cerulean blue. Um, one that I like a lot. So this is the Inoto uh, British Museum Great Court. And it's a fine, and it's an 18 count gold, uh, number seven nib from Anoto. Uh, it's a Bok nib. And then the ink in here is Venvistus. Uh, Venvistus. And it's uh, Aqua de Spargi. But that is a very nice, light turquoise blue color ink. So uh, I am liking that one quite a lot. And then the last pen here is a Sailor Kinger pen, Pro Gear, and this is a Lucky Charm. So we'll do uh, an ink swatch here. And you'll see here that this is uh, quite uh, a wet writing nib. Um, so I have just inked it up, so that's probably why it's maybe oversaturated. So this is the Sailor uh, King of Pen, and it's the uh, Pro Gear, and it is uh, the Lucky Charm, and it's a uh, medium uh, 21 cat gold because it's a King of Pen nib, and then the ink in here is uh, Diamine. And uh, it is Meadow. And I typically don't ink uh, this pen up in, in that ink. I typically go for a different green. But I thought this time I would maybe try this one and see how it goes. So I think let's take a look at these pens inked up one more time. We have a Ginahau X159 in a steel uh, fine nib. Inked up with Colt Pen's Wistful Watermelon. We have a Tweeko Seisho Dragon Red in a medium 14 count gold nib inked up with KWZ Thief's Red. We have a Tweeko Seisho Dragon in a green medium 14 count gold nib inked up with KWZ Grass Green. We have an Anoto Longitude in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with Pelican Edelstein Topaz. We have an Omar 360 in an oblique medium 18 count gold nib inked up with Diamine Earl Grey. We have a London Pen Company Nona 14 in a broad steel nib inked up with Diamine Ultra Green. We have a Danny Trio Chinking Cage Momata in a fine 18 count gold nib inked up with Pilot Ross Shizuku in a hoe. We have a Cross Peerless 125 in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with Venvistus, Venatia. We have an Anoto British Museum Great Court in a fine 18 count gold nib inked up with Venvustus, Aqua di Spargi. And then we have a Sailor King of Pen in a Pro Gear Lucky Charm in a medium 21 count gold nib, inked up with Diamine Meadow. So there you have it. That's my currently ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.